It's set on sure. there. Sure. Sure. Okay. All right. All righty, here you go. Okay, so I'm like thinking back to the time Rita and I just really wanted to think about how we were going to form any sort of team or who was going to partner with us and how it was going to come about. And, um, you know, a lot of, and we, but we wanted things with play. We wanted to make sure that um, it was authentic and playful, kind of like this whole idea of, um, you know, not very serious all the time, but yet people got things out of it and they kind of saw themselves in it and they saw, um, a very good, playful, sometimes touching, sometimes, um, you know, emotional space that we could just create and that was very helpful for folks. So um, that was the time when I was putting together some just going really wild and all out um, with some of the new things that I was doing. I was putting together a new website that was more courageous, the courageously creative for myself and really, um, stepping into the mud with all of that um, and just throwing out all those old conventions. And also I, I was putting together this fun reading series for spring that I called um, cosmic, no juicy cosmic angels with um, three decks, one from an angel card, one from the cosmic reading cards and one from the Sark deck that I just ordered. Um, it's like juicy living cards together. So I called it juicy cosmic angels. And um, it was so outlandish and so hilarious that we got so many fun people that got onto this, this call in a webinar. And, um, you know, I even, we tried to get Sark. Um, I'll just say we got Sark to come on and say hi. And um, it was so much fun. And, um, we just decided that like the more we played, the more naturally people got attracted to that and the more they wanted. And so in order for us to kind of like be um, true to ourselves to stay quiet when we needed to, we just, we had to, um, you know, just agree on sometimes we were going to show up when we wanted to show up or when we, you know, it was somewhat regular that we would host like, videos or Facebook lives or, or zoom webinars, but somewhat regular, but we actually like gave it a space and said, well, sometimes things come up in our lives, but you will be notified. And so, and people really liked that authenticity. Um, we brought on some cool people like my friend, Pam, who, um, who does this authentic leadership style where she actually dresses up as, um, you know, in her, um, you know, connect, um, peaceful warrior kind of outfit when she speaks. She uh, it took her a little while, but she came on board and she was just on fire with it and couldn't believe sometimes how, how crazy and, and creative she could be. And she dressed up in her, her um, camouflage um, suit with her connect hat for her connecting resources and, and came online too. And so it was mostly like pe we brought in people to play from like all parts of our team, you know, and Rita brought in her magician friend who came to play. And it was always these people who were just naturally were attracted to this playfulness, this courageousness. Cindy came on board too, because she started stepping into this authentic playful space too, as a hypnotherapist. And she realized that she was more than just a hypnotist or hypnotherapist, but she was just wanting to be a space for people to just improve their lives. And so she, when she showed up bigger like that, she got more playful, she got more open, and she got out of this stiff and rigid stereotype that she thought that hypnotists would be in. And um, so it was mostly, um, and, and Reed and I still kind of run the show. We, um, we run a membership site that um, is growing, and it helps us pay for things, and it helps us with, expenses that we split and um, we just show up and people start showing up and people share our stuff. And it's an, you know, it's a really affordable price. You know, it's, it's like just a play day. Um, well, it's like play dates. We have two play dates a month and um, you know, people from the business world and artists and everything come to do play dates. And sometimes we'll throw out Mad Libs and sometimes we'll break out the Legos and sometimes we'll um, Kai Lego. 
sometimes we will really talk about pain. Sometimes I'll do Oracle cards. Um, you know, sometimes we'll draw our dreams with crayons and things like that. Play with Play-Doh, finger paints, um, talk about painting process and creativity, but it's, it's courageous and it's, it's really just a space where people can feel young again and youthful again and laugh again. And it breaks people out of their shell. It gets them to a place where they can have these little creative breakthroughs where they, their permission to be fearless and, and crazy and zany because we act crazy and zany or we act quiet or we give permission to be, to tell people to take naps. We give permission to people to, yeah. I, like one time we did a thing called, um, <clears throat> share something you, you thought you should do, but you backed out of and you're proud, you know, and one was, you know, I remember, um, you know, I, one time a person said, yeah, I like kind of meeting with a publisher. I totally didn't show up and didn't even tell them I wasn't showing up. And, um, you know, the publisher was like, and I just waited to see if they were going to email me back. And it took them five days to email me. So um, just little playful little experiments like that, that people gave themselves permission to like, even where there was like stressful points in their life. And they're like, you know, I don't have to like actually do this, you know, or I didn't go to this meeting or no, I didn't call back that person who was, you know, sucking the life out of me and, and decided to, to, to just, you know, be and see what showed up. And sometimes people sort of danced around it and said, Oh, man, something must've happened. And I might not have gotten the email. So I'm sorry. So they would start apologizing for for them <laughs> be, for them being kind of like the the subject of an experiment they had no idea it was like that whole we had a um one of them was like just falling off the a sark thing that i thought of was um invite a dangerous person to tea um meeting that we had and so we dressed up and had tea and and invited our dangerous friends from, you know, a couple dangerous people from either the corporate world or dangerous artists and creative folks. And, you know, we are hats and gloves and, and ate really big pieces of chocolate cake um, in front of people on the screen, but yet talked about creativity and, and um, you know, all the dangerous things we did in life about, you know, well, I took a day off. That was pretty dangerous. Nothing happened, you know, so... Um, but it was, it's basically fun and it's a, a place to act, you know, creatively. It's like a little laboratory and, you know, Rita and I run this, I do the website. She, she is just as playful as anybody else on the site. And so, um, again, people identify with her a lot of times people identify with me a lot of times it's, um, and it works really well. And we just, we bring in these other people as like, you know, creative collaborators in the moment. And then just, it helps them build their list. You know, if they want to start doing something like this, or they can come on board whenever they want. We just plan it out and say, well, this is when we're having our next play date. So um, yeah, we don't have anybody lined up, but if you'd like to come along, you can come along. And um, people just love it. They flock to it. And it's all it is is play and, you know, yeah, there's administrative stuff. So we had to like get a virtual assistant or we found little ways to do shortcuts on a lot of these things, like how to capture emails that, and just let, let it automatically happen. And then we just send things out to a virtual assistant and they send an email and, and we just show up and um, whether it's Mad Libs or Play-Doh or, or Dangerous Tea or, um, you know, we still haven't done the golden handcuffs one, which I, I think would be kind of fun. Like I would play the golden eye song with golden handcuffs. And, um, but yeah, it's just, I think we needed to like, just kind of be in this space of where it was playful enough for us as well, because if it was playful enough for us, it wouldn't feel like work. Cause when it felt like work for us was when we got into resistance too. And so if anything feels like work to us, it's like extra, but if it's feeding us and it feels like play, 
then everything just falls into place because we're not we're not working and we don't have to show up regularly we could when we sometimes do but we're like oh yeah we're just this week it was monday in two weeks it's on a friday and then we record and people watch it whenever they want anyway and they laugh and they comment and they you know that goes there it goes good fun that kind of came out yeah i'll say what do you think about the dangerous tea <laughs> invite your favorite dangerous person oh yeah <laughs> and then we found out that we are dangerous people yes yes and then everyone else found out how dangerous they could be <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So I feel like I should just go do the 10 minutes okay. and, and then you sur supercharge that, you know, from whatever comes out in mine and then I'll supercharge your supercharge. Okay. All right. Cool. Kind of like a different kind of relay race. Mm -hmm. I do the first and the last leg. Yeah. <clears throat> Fun. Okay. All right, so we, uh, Scott and I, started our, uh, we just started building our playtime. It was, we, we took the seriousness out of it. We took the, the appealing to pain out of it. Um, the, any explanations of how to get through stuff, it, kids don't need need explanations of how to get through their feelings. They just feel it all and then go play. So we added the play and allowed all the feelings to happen because um, when you're adults, you, you, the play gets suppressed. And so when you start playing, it actually feels scary sometimes. And so we allowed that those scary feelings to come out and, and we, we created this space where it was, um, it was safe to play, okay to play. It was like a little kindergarten with the, with, I, I remember the little, the blocks, the little cardboard blocks, you could build things and different corners had different things going on. And it would, that was sort of how our video um, conferences went and, people would bring different things to play and um, and that felt just so light to us and taking that whole business thing out of it, um, it, it just freed up our creativity and made everyone want to, it, it just, it created this gravitational pull, this play pull. And, um, and so marketing was not even an issue. We just would say play date on this, on this time and date and we'll see you there. And people showed up and, and Scott being the technical wizard was able to accommodate to all of us from everywhere in the world. And, um, and I, I am able to add things to the website, like, um, um, you know, writing little scenes or funny little characters, um, give this a, a caption, give this guy a caption, something like that. And, um, and then other people are also able to send in their stuff that they, they create in the meantime. So we have these um, play dates a couple times a month and we didn't even realize how locked up people are in their own little routines, you know, just stuck to the TV or whatever that is keeping them from playing. And we didn't have to get into the, the psychology or the um, dysfunction of how we got there. We just had to unlock the play. And 
so tough, like just getting on, on a Facebook live chat with Scott and talking about playing and, and totally being ourselves, you know, we don't have to put on this, um, this performer persona about look how fun we are and funny and don't you love us. It's just, we're just like showing up in the hall of our um, dorm or our college apartment and people come out to see what's going on and a party starts. So we, we started just getting tons of people on our Facebook live chats and then um, our um, membership is, is affordable enough that who doesn't want to have fun? No, like we, we realize people aren't really that interested in working on their stuff a lot of times, but more people are really happy to have fun. And it's not that we let things like slide and dysfunction come into it. It's just like the, the things, the stuff comes up in the midst of the play and we have, we're able to hold a space for that too. And so people are really fed by this community, this, this thing that seems to really be missing in our culture these days is somebody who can really care and listen and and not just one person, but, a, you know, having like a support, not, not like a support group, but just have a circle of people who actually care about you. Somewhere along the line, that's gotten lost. So we, we had that intention to create that, but it, it kind of just unfolded. And we invited um, special guest playmates like my friend Christopher and, and people that Scott knows. And Christopher knows this um, guy named Ira. He's a clown and he's just fabulous. He's not just like typical um, fuzzy hair and, and red nose. He's, he's like totally in his body clown and teaches people how to, to feel good. So he came on one time, Sark came on with this another time and um, just putting that invitation out there, you wanna come and play. These incredible people wanted to come and join us. And yeah, to expand their community, but also just for the fun of it. Um, even Kyle Cease came on once or twice. So, we developed this great team and this like a, a community even outside of our membership site of these just incredible people and and ways that we could just expand in in opportunities that we wouldn't have um imagined for ourselves they they just presented themselves and and being the dangerous people that we became known as being, we had no problem just jumping into whatever they suggested if it felt good. And so our businesses together and separately just became about feeling good. And, the, and having gone through that stage of where it just didn't feel good and then feeling the switch and then living where business feels good was just like it, it created so much compassion for the vast majority of the world that doesn't feel good because we've known that. And it's not like we just arrived blessed. We worked through all that and, and took the um, courageous, creative chances and the experiments and and then we started conducting experiments for other people to see so they could see that someone was actually doing it and that was 
you know, that was scary because you could just fail publicly. But then it became really cool. We're going to fail and we're going to let people watch us fail. And how, most of the time it just didn't work out. So we failed at failing. <laughs> and so failing became a non-issue because if we failed, we succeeded because then everybody could see us fail. And, and that was sort of our, um, one of the, one of the objectives is to let people see that it's okay to fail because then you will do something else. But, um, and so other people were, were feeling better about failing too. So when fear of failing is not an issue or, or not even fear sometimes, it's just like weariness. Ugh, it's, it's not going to work. When you turn it around to, hey, it's not going to work. Let's do it anyway because it's fun. Then, so we, we had this whole message evolve and, um, and it became not, like nothing was planned ever. We did, they just evolved. And that's my 10. Wow. Yeah, fun. Oh my God. I just learned this and I'm going to try this with our stuff is that I just learned that you can throw these things onto YouTube and there's like a transcription button. Oh really? I know I could have saved you a lot of time with that, that book. Sorry. <laughs> um, and you just hit a button and it, and it transcribes your voice. Oh wow. So, and it's fairly accurate. Cindy showed me today. I was like, really? Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. I'll do that too. Okay, so, nice. Yeah. Then we'll have text content. Because mm -hmm. we got to capture this stuff. This right. is like too precious. So. <clears throat> mm. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, you want to jump into a supercharge? Yes. How long do you want to go? Um, five minutes? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Well, throughout all the process, I, it, I have to give credit because Rita has always been very, very in touch with this question of why. And it's, you know, we, I often like think of the how and I've kind of get my mind creatively spinning and I, and I am kind of like this weird elf sometimes with all the creative fun little ideas that kind of happen. But, but Rita always has been the person today, be the stable center of why, why do we do this? And it is because she understands and feels so deeply about, you know, how people haven't given themselves permission to play and how there's a, that's holding this space where we know there is suffering in the world and, um, you know, when we're in that moment, we can either escape it or we can just hold it. And so it's the thing that always touches Rita. And she's always like there in the moment when there's like that why situation, you know, when somebody, you know, is so playful and, and doing something so outlandish and then they start having tears flow. Rita is like so easily, gently the person to show this person the why of compassion of what this is. It's like how she, even like her characters and Augustina and the things it's like, she's created. It's like, this helps her create storybooks too, based on this playfulness and this times of a real journey of why that just comes up and we don't have to even like try and we shouldn't try and so it's, it's, it's this, this space. And so, and, and, you know, I'm the kind of person who gets caught up in the creativity and just, I'm, you know, it's like, it's this ecstasy of creativity, but then Rita comes in with this why in these moments, these moments where folks are touched or, or they, they recognize that this is opening up something in them that they never had a chance to, you know, express sometimes even back to childhood. They're like, you know, I never, I was too scared to color because 
my father was angry or my mother was like whatever, or my childhood was like this. And so there are those moments that, you know, Rita is such a presence where she can just sort of like be there in that space and it just captures it for everyone. And it just gives permission for everyone to like, you know, understand and hold the suffering of the world. And, and that's what makes this more powerful for me. I, I come back because I don't know when these moments are going to come up. I'm in my ecstasy. And then Rita like just picks up somebody who like finds this, this moment. And um, the, it's just so it's touching. And um, I'm learning from that um, because I can really get carried away um, cause I love it. And it's just, just like crazy, crazy. I've always had this little mayhem personality that's secret, but not so secret anymore. Um, but it's, that's, and how, how Rita's art has just expanded the characters she creates, the stories that, that people help her write the stories of Augustina and some of the other characters she wrote, just giving life to that. And it's, you know, it's it's almost like she doesn't even have to. We have an experimental playground that shows real life here in the moment. And so her characters have that too. And they reflect that back because it's like we see so much of ourselves in those characters. And so that part of, makes my job as a web designer so easy. And I have like great, great content that she gives me where it's like there's a character and there, or there's a poem or there is beautiful artwork and it's like my job is just to show up and put it in the page and um and say thank you rita and and this is why we've worked so well together you know because it's like i can be the techie and then the mayhem guy on that and she can be the touchy really hold the world kind of thing and then and and she has this gift of logos and content and and, um, you know, characters and sketches and paint and, and it shows up so beautifully when we can pair those together. Um, and I'm learning how to kind of like be in those moments. And I, I, I kind of give Rita a look when I think, I think something's coming on here. Or I, I, like I've found myself now pause every once in a while, not all the time where I can kind of say, and Rita, what do you think? I'm kind of feeling this pause. And then I just give it over to Rita and she becomes Ellen of the ways with it all. So sweet. sweet. Oh, good. Thank you so much. Yeah. You hear that? Lola. <laughs> wow. Well, you're seeing a lot. I'm going to have to pay attention to you. <laughs> 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 it's okay my elf is still dancing it's yes Woof. <laughs> thank you so much you're welcome wow. that's really what i saw and wow. you're expressing that huh. how interesting because i felt like i was um like reaching in some places but Apparently, you didn't feel that, or you took it somewhere else. <laughs> okay, well, let me get going on yours. Mm. Okay, so, I don't even know what year it is. We've just had so much fun playing. <laughs> who cares? Who cares what year it is? because we are forever young and Scott is, you know, forget that, forget the uh, graying hair. Scott's, Scott's hair has turned back natural color and so is mine. Look at that. <laughs> and um, yeah, we're, we're teaching people to be young and when we, when we feel it and embody it, it just is. There's, that's, that's all aging has become. And I don't know how I even got onto this, but <laughs> that's where it went. Aging is, is not playing and not feeling. 
And so like that's become half of, of our play dates and what attracts people is um, we tell people our ages and they go, what? I, I'm coming to play <laughs> because I want to, I want to be that young again. And um, Scott's, Scott gives me credit for, for holding a particular space, but Scott holds it in a, you know, in, we're like this perfect uh, masculine feminine balance with, with holding the space for people, however it needs to go. Um, especially if somebody's thinking, well, how, how am I going to do that? Scott just steps right in and redirects them out of the how and just holds them from that place of masculine um, problem solving, but not telling them what to do and letting them discover what's inside them for, for feeling good in their next step, whatever it is. And so the more that, that we bring in um, other people who want to come on board, other people who have their, their um, business established, but they want, have, they want to have more play in their lives. It's gotten out of control or, or they're just experts at playing. They come on board. And Scott is just phenomenal at keeping everything organized. And um, like I may, I may um, be involved with the why, but, or yes, the why and, and the feeling and making sure all of that's up front. But without Scott, I would just be in my studio feeling things like I was before. So it's, it's just become this incredible um, relationship that has just snowballed into Scott's business, just taking off with so many people wanting that, wanting that authenticity and um, playfulness coming through in their websites, in their businesses. And, and it's not like an overload you we've especially you you've found a way to delegate some of the um less creative parts of web design and with the virtual assistant um uh, beyond our um group site our membership site you have a virtual assistant for your own business and um you've got you've got a few people as your team doing things that you don't really need to do that aren't, aren't your most exciting thing to do. And um, so we have this membership site. And so we know that there's a, like it, it ebbs and flows a little bit. There's an up and down, but we have a, a good idea of what our absolute base income will be each month. And um, it's always way more than that, but like that, that um, financial anxiety is gone because we know how valuable play is. And that five went fast. Wow. Wow. I think we just created a business. I think so. Oh my gosh. 